Very good morning, my dear students. I welcome to my ninth class. In fact, uh, this is the first class as far as uh, the design of staircase uh, is concerned. This is what the topic we will be discussing today. So, this is uh, what the subject. The learning outcome of this particular class is that after the class, the students will be able to understand the general features of staircase, types of staircases, loads on staircases, the concept of effective span as per IS 456, the load distribution on staircase again as per IS 456 and some of the detailing provisions uh, of staircase as per IS 456 and also as per SP 16. And in the next class, we will be discussing uh, one or two important problems from the point of examination. Now, this is uh, what the syllabus coming under uh, unit 8 design of staircases. So, these are all uh, the different things that are covered in the syllabus, general features, types of staircase, types of staircases, loads on staircases, effective span as per IS code provisions, distribution of loading on stairs and design of staircases with waste labs. So, this is uh, what is mentioned in your syllabus and as far as the design is concerned, it is the design of the staircase with waste slab alone. So, these are the contents as far as uh, my two classes are concerned and today and tomorrow I will be completing this topic. So, today I will be discussing uh, about uh, the various uh, parts of the staircases starting from the definition, of course, the different types of staircases, the requirements, detailing principles, problems and finally, the drawing in connection with the problems. What this staircase is? In fact, you all must have seen uh, the different types of staircases in uh, many of uh, the buildings which you have come across and this staircase is nothing but a structural element which is provided for the purpose of giving an access to the different floors of a building in a structure. In fact, uh, the staircase exists in almost all buildings. So, even in a small residential building, we have to have a staircase. Now, let us see some of the important uh, parts of the staircase before going to the different types of staircase. In fact, I have taken the example of uh, dog legged staircase. This is what the staircase we can see. This is how the staircase looks in plan and this is what the flight, the flight is inclined at some angle. That is what the angle you can see here also and this is what the landing or the landing slab. The flight is also the slab, flight slab and again another landing slab. So, we also appreciate how this landing slab is supported. So, that you will be able to understand uh, some of the important features uh, related to the effective span, detailing and things like that. Now, here the landing slab is supported at the end, that is at the outermost edge, it is supported on the wall. Now, similarly, the this landing is also supported at its outer edge. And if you can see here, this is what the staircase and in fact, the plan of the staircase we can see here and in fact, the area under this is what the staircase room is. And this is what the landing one, the top landing and this is the bottom landing L2 and this is how we will be climbing as you can see in the arrow and we will come to the landing one and then we go to the landing two which is in the next floor. And there is a small gap between the two flights. So, I will tell you about uh, the specifications with regard to all these things subsequently. You need not have to worry for the timing, let us appreciate as to what this staircase is. This is what the all round wall, something like 200 mm, 230 mm, 250 mm or even 300 mm depending on the type of the structure. So, we will be constructing this wall and of course, on the wall here the flight is supported and of course, at the ends of the landing. So, that is what uh, you need to look at. But in this particular case, the span is from the center of this wall to the center of this wall. Now, if you take a part of the flight <coughs> as mentioned uh, here. So, we have the slab which is supporting the steps. The slab is having a width uh, W that is the waste slab width capital D that is what you have seen in uh, the design of uh, slabs and these are the steps. In fact, if you see this step, uh, the step has got uh, a small projection <coughs> that is what is referred to as the nosing. This is the step, the horizontal projection of the step as a whole is called as the tread represented as T in the design and the vertical distance between the 
face to face of the step is what is referred to as the rise and this is what is called as the riser. The vertical face is called as the riser and this is the amount by which it is raised and this is called rise. And in fact, from the this particular point, if you draw a vertical line, the what the portion of the step that is projecting, that is what is referred to as the nosing. In fact, there is one more term we need to appreciate that is called as the going, going of the step, not the going of the flight. Now, going of the step is the distance from the projection of the step to another projection, that is what you can see here. But of course, the entire horizontal width is nothing but the tread. So, obviously, one tread minus of this nosing is what this going is. Now, these are the different terminologies we need to look at when you want to design the staircase. And of course, the inclination of the staircase with the horizontal is taken as theta. So, in a blow-up uh, manner, so this is how uh, the different features uh, looks like. So, what is important is uh, the going. In many of the steps, uh, we will be having this. So, going is equal to tread minus of nosing, the small projection. In fact, the projection is uh, right from the bottom of the step to the top, but sometimes only the top portion will be provided with a nosing. So, in nosing by way of uh, extending the top uh, uh, tile or the granite piece, and otherwise, the nosing also will be looking something like this. Now, let us see the different types of uh, staircases. In fact, this is what the classification based on the shape. We have uh, the straight stair. In fact, uh, the one which we have seen, the one flight of the dog legged staircase is what the straight stair is. And the dog legged staircase, this is what we have seen previously. We are also have open well, it is also called as open nivel stair. Then the geometric staircase, such as the spiral staircase or the circular staircase and so on and so forth. And we also have freestanding staircases. What is important from the examination point of view is the design of straight staircase and the two flights of this dog legged staircase. And we can also see as to how to design this open nivel staircase. And in fact, the design of open nivel staircase is more or less similar to that of dog legged staircase and a small difference in the calculation of load comes into picture. Now, these are some of the photos. In fact, you can make out that all these staircases are wooden staircases. You need not have to worry, but what is important is to appreciate the type of the staircase. And this is the stride staircase. As you can see, it runs as one flight. And here, it is one flight and then we have a 90 degree turn. And of course, the second flight starts. So, this is 180 degree turn. So, this is a dog legged staircase. And we also have a geometric staircase. We can see the geometry of the flight, how exactly the geometry is changing. And all these three staircases are referred to as the longitudinally spanning staircases. I will tell you more about this in the subsequent slides. But here, it is a transversely spanning staircase. In fact, there is no stair as such here. It is only the central spiral beam, what you can see here, that is called as the spandrel beam. On the spandrel beam, the steps are mounted. In fact, the step is spanning in the transverse direction. So, we can also look for a sort of a flight supporting all these steps. That is what uh, the future in RCC and that is what is uh, referred to as a transversely spanning staircase. So, you can also have this type of a situation where we have a spandrel beam RCC and over that only steps are cast monolithically. So, that is also a transversely spanning staircase. In fact, the steps are spanning in the transverse direction and it is not the flight. And depending on the situation, we need to identify whether it is a longitudinally spanning staircase or a transversely spanning staircase. And that is what we are going to say in the subsequent slides. This is a open well or a open uh, nivel staircase. Again, it is a longitudinally spanning uh, staircase. In fact, uh, this open well staircase as we can make out from the figure has got uh, flight and intermediate flight, one flight, two flight and this is what the third flight is. So, in fact, uh, this is what the second flight uh, we have here and a similar type of open well without an intermediate uh, flight. The whole of this transverse width uh, is taken as the landing. 
and this is what the common uh, portion we need to look at this is what I will be explaining later with regard to the distribution of the loads and since this particular portion is common not only to the second flight and also to either the first flight or the third flight and this particular common area whatever the load you are going to get in this common area has to be divided by 2 so that 50 percent goes to horizontal flight and remaining 50 percent goes to this uh, another flight. And similarly, this common area load also has to be distributed between these two flights. So, that is what we need to look at from uh, the point of design, which again I will be discussing later, explaining as to what these uh, specifications from IS 456. Now, these are uh, the other uh, types of staircases. The, in fact, I have shown only the schematic diagram as to how these staircases looks like, spiral staircase and the geometric staircases. This is the spiral and we have to start from uh, one side and of course, we have to move a uh, climb over the stair in the spiral manner and this is how the geometric staircase looks and this is another important uh, staircase and it is uh, very popular these days and we can find this staircase even in a residential building. This is what is referred to as the riser and tread staircase and if you see the flight we do not have any waste slab. Waste slab supporting the steps is what the common future, but here we have the steps uh, from the riser and the tread. So, all these things are small, small rectangular elements somehow connected so as to establish monolithic connection amongst the different uh, elements. So, this is what is referred to as uh, the riser and the tread type of staircase. So, let us see the classification, whatever the classification I explained so far is the classification based on the shape and let us see the classification based on the span. In fact, I explained all these things, one is the horizontally spanning staircase, this is also called as transversely spanning staircase, then we have the longitudinally spanning staircase. For more details, we can refer to IS 456-2000, the mother code on RCC and of course, special publication number 34 in connection with detailing of steel in RC elements. Now, you can uh, see the different uh, diagrams here. So, they are all uh, the transversely spanning staircase. Let us see as to what this uh, transverse span is and then how this transverse span can be defined from the point of analysis and design. Now, this is uh, what the transversely spanning staircase supported at the ends by means of a beam or this stair as a whole can be supported on walls also. But here the center to center distance between these two support is what the effective span, but here your waste slab behaves as if it is a simply supported slab spanning over these two beams or the walls. Now, if you see this particular beam the beam is spanning in the longitudinal direction. In fact, we have two beams here. I have shown the reinforcement detailing only for one beam. The beam is running in the longitudinal direction and that is the reason why the mine reinforcement for the beam has to run in the longitudinal direction. So, what the two rods at the bottom of the beam you have is the mine reinforcement, the tension reinforcement that goes in the longitudinal direction. And similarly, in the other span drill beam also we have the same detail. So, these are the two span drill beams onto which uh, this waste slab is supported. In fact, it is connected monolithically at this end and that is how the reinforcement in the form of stirrups from beam will connect the slab. Now, you see the reinforcement in the slab. The reinforcement in the slab is at the bottom as you can see here. In fact, uh, the blown up way of this one you can see here. So, this is very similar to a simply supported slab which has been discussed in the earlier classes. So, the reinforcement is at the bottom and in fact, uh, the bending moment is maximum at the center of the span and that is the reason why we see the mine reinforcement running horizontally. So, this is what the mine reinforcement you can see the entire length of the reinforcement uh, in this transverse direction and what these points uh, you see here the dots they are the reinforcement provided in the longitudinal direction and they are the distribution bars. 
So, in a transversely spanning staircase, you have the mine reinforcement in the transverse direction, that is what you need to remember. Whereas, uh, we have the distribution still in the longitudinal direction and of course, that is vice versa in case of a longitudinally spanning staircase. Now, let us see the second uh, diagram. In the second diagram, so we have the transversely spanning staircase. The staircase is supported on the central stringer beam. So, obviously, so your flight is double cantilever. So, that is the reason why we need to provide the reinforcement at the top. Maximum bending moment will be at the face of this column. So, definitely, so this projection of the flight will be subjected to maximum bending moment and also the maximum shear force at the junction. And that is the reason why we need to have uh, more reinforcement near the junction and as we go towards the edge, the reinforcement can be reduced. So, that is the reason why the reinforcement as a whole is at the top and if required 50 percent of the reinforcement can be terminated at about mid length if required. Otherwise, the whole length in the transverse direction will be provided with a reinforcement. Now, as the width of the staircase is rather small, in practice it is something like 1 meter to 1.5 meter and half of that is what the cantilever projection and in fact, it is not possible to give the reinforcement at an angle of 45 degree and taking to the other face and that is why we provide the reinforcement at the top and we bend that in the form of a hook something like this. So, C hook. So, that will give you the required uh, anchorage at the end. And what these small dots, they are the longitudinal reinforcement which is nothing but the distribution reinforcement. Now, the stringer beam instead of providing uh, at the center, we can also provide the stringer beam at one end depending on the situation. Then the whole of the flight is spanning in the transverse direction from the stringer beam. So, that is a single cantilever transversely spanning supported on the stringer beam, but here it is a double cantilever transversely spanning staircase with a central stringer beam. Now, the same transversely spanning staircase I have taken here, so that you can appreciate uh, the detailing. So, this is what the mine reinforcement. So, this detailing if you see it is exactly similar to the detailing of a simply supported slab, but instead of uh, the slab supported on the walls. So, we have uh, the beams running in the longitudinal direction. In fact, this looks uh, as if it is uh, a part of the continuous beam and a slab system. So, you can also see the details of the reinforcement in the beam, detail of reinforcement in the central span of the transversely spanning staircase and uh, this is what the length we need to appreciate to an extent of about 0.1 to 0.15 of this effective span is what the projection of the reinforcement from the face of the column. So, what reinforcement we have at the bottom, at least 50 percent of the reinforcement has to be extended and then taken to the top of the slab and further extended in such a way that from the face of the support. So, it gets extended by about uh, 10 to 15 percent of the effective span. So, that is what uh, you really need to look at. In fact, we will be learning more about this detailing in a separate uh, subject, uh, de detailing of uh, reinforced uh, uh, structures. So, we have one more subject uh, where all these things will be covered in detail and this is how uh, the hook looks like as far as the stirrup of this uh, beam is concerned. Kindly see the effective span here. The effective span is nothing but center to center of the support is what the effective span as far as this particular transversely spanning slab is concerned. Now, let us uh, see as to what this uh, longitudinally spanning staircase and the effective span criteria for that. So, this is uh, what uh, the dog legged staircase is. So, we have the first flight and this is the second flight. So, one of the flight uh, looks something like this. We can also see the support here. So, whole width of this uh, flight is a support. So, this is what the longitudinal span. So, this support can be a RCC support in the form of a beam, beam cast monolithic with the uh, landing slab or it can be a simple masonry support depending on the situation. Again, you have one more support here. Now, here the distance from the center of the support to the center of the other support is what the effective span is. But in this case, the flight is spanning in the longitudinal direction. And what about this landing? 
yeah, this end of the landing, the left end of the landing is continuous with this flight, whereas the other end is supported on this support. It may be a wall or it can be a beam. In other words, the span for this uh, landing is horizontal and similarly, the span for this staircase is also horizontal. Means, uh, so this flight is spanning longitudinally. In fact, uh, your landing is also spanning in the same direction. It means, uh, both landings as well as the flight spans in the same direction. So, this is what is referred to as uh, the first case of this longitudinally spanning staircase for which the effective span is simply taken as center to center distance measured horizontally, center to center distance of the two supports. Let us see this particular case 1. So, this is the case where the landing slab spans in the same direction as this stair. The staircase as well as the landing slab spans in the same direction and that span is horizontal and of course, longitudinally. So, in that case, the effective span L e is center to center of the walls or the bearings. So, this is the second case where uh, the flight is spanning onto the edge of the landing slab which spans parallel with the riser. So, you can see first the landing. So, this is what the landing is. The landing is spanning parallel with the riser. So, this is what the risers you can see the step these are the risers. So, this is the width of the step parallel to the step or along the riser is what this span as far as this landing slab is concerned. So, that is the reason why in a landing slab we need to provide the mine reinforcement in the transverse direction only for the landing slab because the slab landing slab spans in that direction transversely. Now, whereas the flight is spanning in the longitudinal direction. So, the reinforcement comes in the longitudinal direction similar to what we have seen in the previous case, but that reinforcement need, need not have to be extended till the end of the landing slab because that reinforcement is not going to do anything for the landing slab. That reinforcement is only the distribution reinforcement for the landing slab, whereas the main reinforcement for the landing slab has to be provided in the transverse direction, which means this landing slab has to be designed separately over these two supports. The center to center of the transverse span, this is what the transverse span is and that has to be taken for the design of landing slab. So, whereas the design of this flight is different. So, in such situation how to define the effective span of the flight. Now, the width of the landing is taken as 2 y onto one side and 2 x onto the other side and this is what the support whole width of the landing is supported. In other words, the bearing is 2 y onto one side and 2 x onto another side. Half of the bearing is what the criteria for the definition. So, center of this bearing to this bearing is what the effective span is. In fact, the effective span is nothing but the horizontal portion of this uh, going. In fact, uh, we can see only the going of this step in the plan. Even though we have a small part of the nosing, in case of a step with nosing, the nosing is not visible in the plan. So, that is why. So, all these goings of the steps, if you add, you get the going of the flight. So, the going of the flight referred to as capital G plus of the bearing on either side. So, that is x plus y. So, in other words, g plus x plus y is what the effective span in that situation. And sometimes, uh, this support bearing is extended in the transverse direction also. Even in that case, all the three edges of the landing slab has a support. Even in that situation, so the same principle holds good. Center to center distance of the these two bearing is what the effective span. One important point to be looked into is that if this y or if this x is less than 1 meter and that exact value of x or y is to be used and by chance if this x is greater than 1 meter and y is greater than 1 meter, whichever is greater than 1 meter that has to be restricted to 1 meter. So, that is the reason why we have this particular condition. If x is greater or equal to 1 meter, then take x as 1 meter and similarly, if y is greater than or equal to 1 meter, take y as 1 meter by chance if they are less than 1 meter and that actual value has to be substituted here and the effective span has to be determined. Again, this is a 
longitudinally spanning staircase. Now, let us see the third situation. So, this is uh, what the landing and this is the flight. So, just see where exactly it is supported. The support is at the end of the landing by means of a beam. So, you can also have a beam something like this. This is uh, referred to as uh, the landing beam. In fact, it is a beam of restricted depth. Probably, you must have seen all these things in the design of a doubly reinforced uh, sections. And in this particular case, so what is this effective span? In fact, you can see the effective span as if it is from the center to center of the support. In fact, uh, the center of this beam, the center of this beam should correspond to the first riser. And that is the reason why the definition is like this. Case C, where the flight is supported at top and bottom risers by beams spanning parallel with the riser the distance center to center of the beam is taken as the effective span. So, the center of this beam to the center of this beam is what the effective span. In other words, the center of these two beams uh, should correspond to the first and the last riser and that is the reason why the distance between the first and the last riser which is nothing but the going is what the effective span is. For more details, so you can refer to IS 4.6-2000, the mother code for RCC. Now, let us see the detailing uh, principle as far as the longitudinally spanning staircase is concerned. In fact, I am not going to discuss again here because uh, I have to again repeat all these things uh, in the design. After the design is over, so I will be explaining these details uh, in the next class. But what are all the basic uh, things that are uh, needed? Now, here the steel is provided at the bottom, but in the longitudinal direction. So, because uh, the tension develops uh, at the bottom, anchorage and development steels are to be properly provided, which will be able to make out, especially at the junction of the landing and the flight. So, these uh, anchorage reinforcement comes into picture and we also need to appreciate as to what is the development length and how to extend the reinforcement in the crossover forum, so that uh, the spelling of the concrete is not going to take place and then the distribution steel and to keep the reinforcement in position, the top and the bottom steel, we need to put uh, some additional uh, bars in the form of chairs, we call it as row of chairs and of course, we need to have a nominal foundation for the ground flight. If the flight starts from the ground, a small foundation has to be provided. This is another uh, important uh, concept and this is uh, what is uh, discussed in detail in IS 456, the loading for the longitudinally spanning uh, staircase, which is a open well staircase. So, you can see here, so three flight open well staircase is taken here, the first flight, second flight and the third flight. So, the top one is the first one, this is the second one and this is the third one. And what is the loading distribution as far as this first flight or even this third flight is concerned. So, the longitudinally spanning staircase. So, here more load comes into picture here lesser load because of this common portion. This is what I explained earlier. So, since this common portion is shared between these two flights, the orthogonal flights. So, whatever the load we have here has to be halved. So, 50 percent of the load goes to one flight, the remaining 50 percent goes to another. If the total load as far as this horizontally spanning staircase is W, that is what the load W, but 50 percent of that W by 2 is what the load for this landing part, which is the common part shared by both the flights. Now, similarly in this direction, of course, this is the transverse direction, but it is not a transversely spanning. Again, it is a longitudinally spanning, but it is spanning between these two longitudinal walls. So, you can see the supports here and in fact, this is what the load here, only in the central portion where you have the steps, the more load comes into picture and that is what the maximum load capital W and this capital W need not be same as this capital W. Again, it depends on what is the type of uh, uh, the material being used here and what is the thickness of uh, the slab for this particular uh, direction and things like that. But generally, the load may be same in both the flights and it could be different as well. The variation of the bending moment diagram, you can see here it is a symmetrically varying bending moment diagram, but here the variation is slightly non-symmetric the bending moment will not be maximum at the center and we need to identify the point where the bending moment is maximum. 
and that value is to be used for the design. In fact, you can also see some formula that will give you the maximum bending moment and also the distance from the port as to what that maximum bending moment is. So, this is the distance at which this bending moment is maximum. So, we can remember the formula or you can calculate the reaction and then we can identify the point where the bending moment is maximum and then that bending moment can be determined. Now, similarly for the other longitudinal span in the transverse direction also we can determine the maximum bending moment. In some other textbook formula for the maximum bending moment is given otherwise you can also calculate from the reaction. So, this is what the information you find in IS 456. The load on areas common to any two such spans may be taken as one off in each direction as shown. So, that is all the thing you have in code and that is how it is to be interpreted as far as this open well state case is concerned. Now, this is another important point discussed in IS 456. It is only from the point of appreciating as to what the specification is and you may not come across such type of designs from the examination point of view. In practice, we will be having many situations where this has to be looked into carefully. Now, this is uh, the transversely spanning staircase. We can see the RCC slab and this is what the wall actually. So, the flight which is transversely spanning has been taken into the wall and what is important here is this distance for what length the flight has been taken into the support or the wall. If that is more than 110 mm, then we have this particular specification coming into picture. This is what the actual projecting width, the one which is visible, whereas the effective width is taken something like this, measured from a point which has gone into the support up to the end of the flight, that is the total projection. So, that is what is referred to as the effective breadth of the staircase and if it is a transversely spanning staircase and that effective breadth will be the span. Where flights or landings are embedded into walls for a length of not less than 110 mm. So, that is what I told you not less than 110 mm is the embedment length and such staircases are designed to span in the direction of the flight a 150 mm strip may be deducted from the loaded area. So, this is what the sentence have taken as it is from the code and we have to read these sentences once or twice to get the correct picture and this is uh, what the strip of 150 mm being deducted from the total width of the load means you need not to consider the total width of the load. In fact, near the end that is near the support a width equal to 150 mm can be deducted and the rest of the load can be calculated and that is to be used for the calculation of the bending moment. It is quite obvious also when people are moving on the staircase. So, majority of the situation the load will be near the center on or towards the edge and it is not that much towards the support. And also how to define this effective width? This is what you need to look at the another point. The effective breadth of the section has to be increased by 75 mm for the purpose of design. So, what projection we will be having here is not the width that is the visible width but the effective width has to be increased by about 75 mm. So, this 75 mm increase in the width and of course, uh, the width of the loading reducing by 150 mm is what the specification provided the slab is projecting into the wall by a width more than 110 mm. Now, let us see some of the important uh, guidelines that are required uh, for fixing the dimensions. And in examination, many times the dimension of the staircase room will be given and we have to identify how many steps will come in the flight, what is the riser, what is the tread and like that we need to do some proportioning and with regard to that proportioning, these are all some of the important points. Now, as far as the rise is concerned, generally it varies from 150 mm to 180 mm. So, in case of a public building, so, the rise is rather small, but in a residential building it can go up to 180, where majority of the situation the general public use the staircase, especially the aged persons are using it, we need to keep riser as small as possible 
and of course, the width of the step the tread as large as possible. Now, as far as the tread is concerned, minimum is 220 mm and you can go up to 250 mm, sometimes 275 and it can even go up to 300 in case of uh, public building. Now, in case of a residential building, tread is 220 to 250 mm. But if you see, in case of uh, public building, that is what I told you, 120 to 150 is what the riser. The riser has been kept significantly less compared to the corresponding value in a residential building, but the tread is 250 to 300. In fact, uh, this is slightly larger compared to what we have in a residential building. But we have to remember one small equation, tread plus twice r, tread plus two times of the rise generally lies between 500 mm to 650 mm and with that also the value of r and t can be calculated. Knowing one, the other one can be identified. Now, what is the width of the staircase? The width of the staircase is generally about 1 meter. So, that is why it is 0 0.8 to 1 meter for residential building and that width can be increased substantially something like 1.8 meter to 2 meter in a public building. So, as far as the residential buildings are concerned, 1 meter here and there. So, you can have it and if it is a public building, definitely more than 1 meter and depending on the size of the staircase. Other guidelines, the width of the landing is equal to the width of the stair. The width of the landing is kept equal to the width of the stair. So, that is uh, another uh, guideline. The number of steps in each flight should not be greater than 12. So, it is generally 10 to 12. Pitch of the staircase is something like 38 degrees. So, anything in the range of uh, uh, 28 to 38 degrees. So, we can uh, provide, but not more than 38 degree is what the limit. The headroom measured vertically above any step or below the mid landing shall not be less than 2.1 meter. So, this is uh, what the headroom. If the headroom is less than this, it is not possible to use that particular area very effectively and you cannot also increase this because the height of the step, uh, height of the flight uh, gets uh, affected. So, in general, so this 2.1 meter is what the limit as far as the height of the headroom is concerned. Now, how to design uh, the stair? In fact, the design of the staircase is uh, exactly similar to the way the slab has been designed. In fact, all these things uh, have been covered uh, in the design of slabs by my colleague. So, I am not going into the details, but just to have a uh, few points. Uh, so, you can see these uh, important points. First, we need to calculate the loads. The different uh, loads uh, that comes uh, in staircase, it is the dead load of the waste slab. And of course, uh, we have the finish load also. Bottom of the waste slab has to be finished and of course, top of this step also need to be finished and they all constitute uh, the finish load and step is an additional load. And of course, we have the imposed load. The imposed load has to be defined based on the occupancy, whether it is a residential staircase or a public staircase. The live load generally varies from 1.5 kilo Newton per meter square to something like 5 kilo Newton per meter square depending on the importance of the staircase. So, it can be taken in the range of 2 to 4 depending on the importance of the staircase. And this step load is what the additional load to be considered and when all the loads are uh, calculated, so we can determine the two structural parameters required for the design. One is the bending moment, the maximum bending moment which is generally near the center of the span and of course, near the support, we have the shear force. But what is important uh, here is, what is the bending moment? So, we have the bending moment equation, something like W r squared by 8, that is valid for the simply supported case. But here, because at the end, depending on the rigidity, so we will be having a parapet or sometimes uh, in a continuous staircase. So, we also have the wall at the end of the landing, above and below we have the walls and that offers certain amount of rigidity and as a result, uh, it is treated as and uh, that particular support behaves as if it is a restraint support or a partially fixed support and that is the reason why your effective span has to be reduced. In other words, for the actual span, the bending moment uh, is something like W r squared by 10 or W r squared by 12. In fact, in all my designs, uh, I use W r squared by 10 as the bending moment instead of W r squared by 8. 
The staircase is designed as a conventional slab. All rules regarding the detailing are similar to that of the slab. We can also see some of the detailing uh, referring to SP34 and the enough development length and the anchorage lengths uh, for steel has to be provided at the ends and also at the junction of the landing and the flight. Now, I will uh, take one uh, simple problem. Let us understand as to what this particular problem is. Design a dog legged staircase for a residential uh, building hall measuring 2.2 meter by 4.7 meter. The width of the landing is 1 meter. In fact, he has given the width. Otherwise, uh, we can adjust the width of the landing as 1.1 meter itself. So, that there is no gap between the flight, but here it is 2.2 meter width landing width is 1 meter. Obviously, we can think of a gap to an extent of 0.2 meter. The distance between floor to floor is 3.3 meter. So, we need to identify as to what is the height of the flight and if it is a dog legged staircase that is what uh, it is mentioned in the problem. We need to identify the height of uh, each of the flight. So, that 3.3 uh, meter by 2 is what the height of uh, each flight is provided the flights are similar. The rise and tread may be taken as 150 mm and uh, 270 mm. Here it is given, but in some cases, so these things uh, has to be assumed depending on the situation. The weight of the floor finish is uh, 1 kilo Newton uh, per meter square. It is given in the problem, otherwise uh, 0 0.5 to 1 kilo Newton per meter square can be assumed. The materials used are M20 grade concrete and Fe415 grade steel sketch the details of steel. What about uh, the effective span for the staircase? How exactly this staircase is supported? This is a very important point and in the examination, you should see what the condition as far as the support is given. So, with reference to that only the effective span can be determined and once that effective span is identified properly, so your bending moment, shear force, all those things will be correct and definitely your design is going to be correct. So, here the flight and the landing slab spans in the same direction, means flight spans longitudinally and in fact, the landing also spans longitudinally at the ends of the landing we have the support. In fact, this is the first case of what we discussed with regard to the effective span. Now, these are all the things given, data, the characteristic strength of the concrete is 20 MPa, yield strength is 4 and 5 width of the landing is uh, 1 meter, height of the stair that is 3.3 meter. In fact, we have two flights. So, therefore, the size of the staircase hall is 2.2 meter by 2.3.7 meter that is given. Riser is 150 mm, the tread being 270 mm. In fact, we are assuming the wall thickness as 200 mm. So, with this, uh, we need to take up the design and at the end of the design, so we have to do neat detailing. So, this I will be discussing in the next class. So, whatever uh, we have covered is uh, just uh, the general future of the staircases, the different types of staircases, the loads that are coming on the staircases and how exactly the effective span can be defined depending on whether it is a transversely spanning staircase or a longitudinally spanning staircase and of course, uh, some detailing concept has been discussed and we have just defined uh, one problem on longitudinally spanning staircase, which I will be discussing in the next class that is tomorrow and that happens to be the last class. So, thank you very much and uh, if you have any questions, you can ask.